already doing it, you have a part to play. Amen? So Billy and Gina, come on down. There's a whole lot more love in this house than that. I'll give you one more chance. Thank you very much. That's Come on. That's right. And in case I don't get the microphone again, I just want to say it's not an accident you were here today as we were singing about peace. Uh, Pastor Dan started off with the scripture and peace be, be still. And the song, um, you to carry, you just exemplify peace. And I am so grateful that God has sent you to the university because if there's one thing college students need, it's peace. And the peace from God, Jehovah Shalom, to be in their life. So thank you for representing. Amen. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, we're so excited to be here with you guys this morning. Um, yeah, I, I'm Billy, and this is my wife, Gina. And um, as was said, we are at UMass Amherst, so not too far away, um, with Crew, which is a you know non-denominational or interdenominational, um, yeah, Christian campus ministry. And um, yeah, we're just really excited and grateful to be able to share with you guys some of the stuff that God's been doing. So I'm gonna let Gina start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first of all, thank you again, Livestream Church, for having us and for supporting us, um, both in prayer and financially. Uh, my mom, um, Carol, has been going to Livestream Church for the past three and a half years, and I know it's been so life-changing for her. Um, so yeah, we're so excited to share with you. I graduated from UMass last year, and Billy and I got married this past summer. So this has been our first year of campus ministry together. Um, so yeah, we're excited to tell you guys more about that. Um, oh yeah, so that's us, um, and we're at UMass. Um, yeah, so in case you're not familiar with CREW, we're in an international campus ministry organization, um, and we are a caring, compassionate community, passionate about knowing Christ and making Christ known. Um, so yeah, Christ is just so necessary on college campuses around the country. Um, there is a great need for him. Um, as you can see, um, college campuses are very high pressure environments, um, oftentimes very secular like UMass, um, with a lot of different mental health issues um, that college students are struggling with, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, um, substance and alcohol abuse and addictions, um, sexual assault is super prominent on college campuses, as well as just a cultural current that is against God, a lot of the time both in the classroom and socially. Um, but amidst all of this brokenness, God is truly at work, and we are so excited to share with you more about that. Um, many of you may just know about UMass stereotypically, just a very large, secular, progressive college campus. Um, but again, um, Christ is just drawing students to him, and it's such a joy to be a part of that. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to explain just real quick, like kind of Cruz ministry philosophy, and then we're just going to tell stories, because that's, that's what people want to hear. You guys want to hear the stories, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so our model is essentially three things, win, build, and send. And so winning, um, pretty straightforward. We just want every student on campus to have an opportunity to come to know Jesus, every corner of campus. Um, and then we want to send students from every corner of campus to every corner of the globe. Um, so that's, that's kind of win and send. And then build is probably, um, I would say, like, probably the biggest part of what we do, which is just meeting with students individually, helping them figure out what they're gifted in, helping them grow in their faith, um, teaching them how to study scripture, and, and equipping them so that when they graduate, whether they're going out to be a missionary like vocationally or whether they're going to be a missionary in the workplace, we want everybody to be equipped to live on mission for God for their whole life, wherever that, wherever that is for them. Um, so that's kind of our model. So then um, on, on the next slide, we got a nice picture of uh, me with these three guys there. Um, and this is like, yeah, probably the most encouraging story I've had from the past couple months. So essentially, um, the guy on the far left there, his name is Ahmed, and uh, he's from Sudan. And then you got Takir from Pakistan, and then Adam, who is also from Sudan. And um, 
Ahmed is the president of the Muslim Student Association at uh, UMass Amherst, which probably has about 200 uh, Muslim students in it. And over the last year and a half, he and I have cultivated just like a really close friendship and, and we meet up with each other semi-regularly and just, just talk. And, and a few months ago, he confided in me that he'd been having some doubts about Islam. And he was kind of sharing with me. And, you know, it's really exciting because he's the president. So it's like if the president is having doubts, then, you know, somebody, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, he, he was graduating in December. And so I was like, okay, like, you know, he's, he's about to leave. I got to meet up with him again. And, and you know, I got to just love him and share just as, as explicitly and clearly and lovingly and kindly as I can the, the love of Jesus and the message of, of, of the gospel with him. And so we plan to get uh, dinner together, and, and we, I go downtown, go to where we're going to meet dinner. I see him, and then the, the two other guys, they walk in, and unbeknownst to me, apparently, he, he had invited them too, but, but he hadn't told me. So in my, my mind, I go in the door, and I'm all bold, and I'm like, okay, yes, this is going to be so good, so good. And then I see these other two guys, and then I, I get, like, afraid, you know, and I'm just like, oh, I wasn't prepared for three guys, you know. I was, I was prepared for one guy, you know. Um, but But... Thankfully, I, I just kind of prayed, and I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, like, you're going to have to work here. You're going to have to take the wheel. You're going to have to do something, because I don't know what I'm supposed to say to three guys. <laughs> um, so it was unbelievable, because we talked for about half an hour, just about normal stuff, and then all of a sudden, totally out of nowhere, like, it didn't flow with the conversation at all. Ahmed was just like, so Billy, how did you become a Christian? And I was just like, it doesn't get more open than that, you know, it's just like, a, so, so I, I got to share my story about how I came to Christ as a college student. Um, I, I wasn't raised in a Christian home myself, um, and I just got to share more about what that looked like in my life, and they, they were asking a lot of questions, and it was really, really, uh, like, just cool to be able to share that, because I'd been wanting to do that for a while, and then it was so crazy, because the, the guy right next to me, Adam, he like just, I'd met him, you know, an hour before, and then he just opened up and just shared his whole life story about growing up in, in Darfur in Sudan with the genocide, and how when he was a kid, um, like just these militiamen had come into his town and like killed his whole family, and he had run away into the desert, and how he had just like lived in a refugee camp for eight years in Sudan, and then how he had come to Springfield um, like a few years ago, and now he was at UMass, and it was just like this crazy thing where you wouldn't think that if I'd known this guy for a month that he'd be willing to share that. And yet in an hour, the Holy Spirit had just softened his heart to be willing to share like just this really, really difficult stuff with me. And so I just felt really privileged that he felt that, that, um, that welcoming, uh, or that welcomed, I should say. Um, and so um, after that, I was, you know, able to really um, share, share the gospel just explicitly in, in its entirety. And so unfortunately, I can't say that they all were like, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to know Christ right now at this moment. But if you look at that photo and you just see the smiles and the happiness on each of our faces, I really believe and I really felt um, just the Holy Spirit's presence in that space and just how there was just this, this joy that they had of, of being told that, that God actually loved them and that they could have like a secure eternity with him in heaven and, and be filled with joy because in Islam there's no guarantees. It's you pray five times a day, you make a pilgrimage, you, you pay uh, a certain amount of, of tithing, and then God might have mercy on you. But in Christianity, Jesus already paid the price. So we just have faith in him and, and we follow him wherever he, he leads us and eventually that's to heaven, <laughs> you know, um, and, and now it's, it's to wherever he leads us on earth. So um, yeah, I was just so encouraged by, by those guys and by um, just what God is doing in their lives. And um, you can continue to keep them uh, in your prayers, Ahmed, Takir, and Adam. And then finally, I just wanted to say as well, I've been really encouraged um, how, if you see the other photos, how there are um, students who have really kind of caught the vision of just reaching the nations at UMass. Um, and so they have really just run with that, and, and they're... Um, yeah, just like really going going after the nations at UMass as well. So that's really exciting for me um, to be able to like kind of how God gave me that vision and how now students have that vision. And, and um, there's, uh, I think, 123 countries at UMass where their students are coming from, many of which it's pretty much impossible to go to as a Christian without serious risk of life or, or going in prison. And they're here. So it's like we can reach them with the gospel 
and they can come to know the Lord, and then they can be a missionary when they go back. So that's, that's kind of the, the vision. So, yeah. Yeah, Billy really, really loves Muslim students, and honestly, they love him too. Billy speaks some Arabic, so they are just like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, but yeah, and I'm really excited to share a story about a friend of mine named Laurel, who I met when she came into UMass as a freshman. So Laurel um, was coming from a vaguely Christian background, wasn't a believer, didn't know what it meant to have a personal relationship with Christ. Um, but again, she saw some advertisements for crew around campus, so she's like, okay, like, I'll just check it out. So anyways, um, the picture on the left over here shows her as a freshman in the, the very first small group that I ever led. So I was a sophomore at the time. Um, and she was really just exploring Christianity for the first time and had never actually been in Christian community before. Um, she kind of thought that Christians were judgmental, that it was just about a set of rules to follow. Um, however, um, the Holy Spirit really just... Um, was working in her heart that year, just revealing um, Jesus to her, and she ended up coming to the coming to Christ by the end of her freshman year of college. Um, so that was her freshman year. Now Laurel is a senior. So over these past four years, um, through crew, through the local church, um, through the Word, through the Holy Spirit in her life, she has just grown exponentially. Um, as a freshman, she was, you know, just like. She barely said a word, honestly, in our small group, like, the entire year. Um, and over the past four years, she has just grown so much and really has been just ministering to her friends at UMass. And now as a senior, it's funny, again, she's in my small group. Um, she is a leader, and she is equipped to follow Jesus um, after graduation this May and actually um, is feeling full-time vocational ministry on her heart, working with inner-city populations. So... Yeah, praise God for that. But Laurel is just one example of what it can look like um, for God to work through a campus ministry um, that's on, like, a very secular campus um, and just a community of believers. Maybe you saw um, the picture earlier of just, like, our large group meetings. There are about, like, 80, 85 of us who gather weekly just all together to um, worship together and to grow in fellowship and to welcome in our friends. Um, every week at our weekly meetings, there are people coming in who aren't believers but who are just checking things out. Um, so it's so exciting, and God is really, really at work. Oh, yeah. So, again, we just want to thank you so much um, for your support, for your prayers. We are so grateful um, for both of those things. So if you have any questions for Billy and I, feel free to find us at the end of the service. We have a monthly prayer letter that we send out. Um, so if you're interested in receiving that, um, just let us know. We can grab your emails. But thank you so much again for having us. So it's great to put a face and a name to what's going on. Amen. And what I love about the Lord is the Lord will, one day you'll be rewarded for what is happening at the University of Massachusetts because of your faithfulness to give and our ability to give from the ministry. And the Lord is so proud of you for taking your first year of marriage to do this. You know, getting married and taking that time together is so very important. And you shared it with the world, literally. The Lord has put the world in your hands. And so I want to pray concerning that. Can I have your hands? Father, I thank you for this couple. I thank you for their willingness to lay their life down, even in a very sacred time of the beginning of marriage. And Lord, I'm just going to, I ask right now, I declare and decree a blessing over them, but I ask for a multitude of return, Father, for the seeds that they have sown of their life, of their time, sacrificing for these young adults who are needing your presence. Father, I thank you that as you have delivered the world into their hands, that they will see the world changed forever, eternally, permanently, Father, for your kingdom's sake, and they will take that fire back to the 123 nations. Father, let them touch lives. Let them impact them like never before. I release them to a new level of grace and presence of you to bring the nations to your feet, Father. I thank you for this absolute awesome season and the testimonies that are abounding in Jesus' name. Amen. Very proud Amen. of you. Amen. Very proud Thank of you. So you. Very, very proud of you. Very proud of you. So very proud of you. What happened?
Are you leaving me out up there, sound booth? What are you doing? To me? Everybody laughed when I turned my back. The power of a story. So faith building. And I love your genuineness and your vulnerability. You walked in and you saw three guys. It was like, ah, you were all set for one. But you know what? There's a lot of days that you all feel the same way where you wake up and you thought it was just one enemy and then you're surrounded. Uh, wow, what a great story. Well, I've got a great story that uh, seeing how we're talking about Ernie today. Uh, who, who doesn't like to be talked about. Uh, Ernie helped me very diligently all week destroy that part of the building. Well, why are you being thankful? He helped you destroy it? No, he helped me demolish it and get rid of all the wet sheetrock so it didn't mold and mildew. In the process of being very diligent and not having a lot of talk time, he uh, had his fiance on FaceTime and was showing her around the building and introdu introduced me. Um, actually, has a couple awkward introductions this week. Um, <laughs> if you saw me, I had my monkey suit on. I call it a monkey suit on, a full jumpsuit. Maybe like an air, uh, a mechanic. Maybe you've seen an airline mechanic or a garage mechanic. And hat and loaded down with sheetrock dust. And... And Ernie says, hey, this is my pastor. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, no, man, this is not a good scene. But then I was so encouraged by her maturity because he told me afterwards that she really liked me. And I said, she really liked me? She didn't. She just saw me. I was a disaster, man. <laughs> and uh, and it had nothing to do with what I was wearing. You know what she said? I looked into his eyes, and I liked him immediately. She must have saw love in my eyes, even though everything else <laughs> didn't look like love on the outside. <laughs> there was love in my heart for her. Um, I didn't really feel that bad for her because she was in 85-degree temperature <laughs> in Puerto Rico. Um, but here's the rest of the story. Ernie tells me, seeing how we're talking about love and relationships in a better way, he told me a great factual, say factual. He told me in Puerto Rico there's a lot of murders. Ernie, where are you? Where's Ernie? He's not here today. Oh, no wonder I can talk to him today. Then I won't make him uncomfortable. That's awesome. God is so good. Ernie's tell me that on this island, I think he said it was like 1,500 murders a year, something like that. It's, it was, wow, bigger than I thought on an island, uh, not talking about the United States. And he told me this great story about the biggest gangster uh, murderer, you know, just big time troublemaker, got saved. He gave his heart to Jesus. It gets better. <laughs> He, God sent him back into the prison to minister like you're being sent into the campus to minister. Many times God sends you to places that you can really relate to uh, that can happen many times. And so he did for this particular gentleman. And guess who was in the prison that he was sent to minister to the guys? The guy who killed his brother. And God, he's going into the prison, and he finds, finds out the guys in the prison, and God says, you're going to love him. And the guy says, no, I'm not. <laughs> and God says, yes, you are. And he says, no, I'm not. <laughs> and he says, yes, you are. <laughs> and we know who won the wrestling match. Phenomenal story. He walked into the guy's cell, and the guy is freaking out because he knows what he did. Matter of fact, he's in, in prison for life. And the guy says, I'm just here to give you a hug. <laughs> the guy didn't know how to comprehend 
the kind of love that had transformed this guy's heart and took him like Apostle Paul from a murderer killing his brother to someone that walked in a level of love that could forgive him and extend love to him. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a series called Love and Relationship, A Better Way. That is a true story about a better way. That's what changes people's lives. I kind of gave away, uh, and I felt it was necessary to share what I said in praise and worship, and it's an extension of something that came out of my heart and my wife's heart in the marriage dinner and meeting, gathering that we had last night. And I feel so impressed to drill down and say something because I know the power of repetition and I know the warfare that you deal with in relationship every single day, whether it's marriage, whether it's friendship, whether it's people at work. Life is like real estate where they say location, location, location when it comes to real estate in life. It's about relationship, relationship, relationship. And if there's a necessity, major necessity, that if you're not good at relationship, you're not going to succeed at the main mission. They talked about mission on campus. The main mission that we're called to exhibit and to walk in every single day, and that is love. Now, before I go farther in, in what I feel the main point is for today that I already said in praise and worship that I want to reemphasize, I want to say this with great sobriety because of what you just said about a freshman came into college thinking that Christianity was about a bunch of rules and do's and don'ts. Now, I want to clarify something here. The Bible is what I call a life manual about how to do life. Scripture says in Joshua 1.8, if you think about who he is and what he has said, you meditate on that, you think it and you say it, then, and, and you follow through, then you are going to experience a profitable, prosperous life. That's out of Joshua 1.8. I'm going to read you another scripture about what Jesus says about the word because here's what I understand. Jesus said, you don't love me unless you do what I say you're supposed to do. In other words, love is action. There's many times I know what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do, but like the guy going into the prison, you may not have the feelings of love to do something or, or want to do something, but you know it's what you're supposed to do. So first and foremost, when we're talking about love and relationships and a better way, what we want to do is we want to separate out that you have to feel love to give love. You don't have to feel love to give love. Are you with me? I don't have to feel like being love, one of the root words of love that we talked about in 1 Corinthians on Life Chat Wednesday night is patience and kindness or long-suffering. Well, nobody likes that word, long-suffering. But if I'm willing to be kind and patient and long-suffering, there's not a lot of feelings of love and long-suffering. It's about, no, Jesus did this. He went through a whole lot more suffering than I went through. It was an action of love. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his very best. He valued you and I. Is everybody with me? Okay. So in, in the word, Jesus and in other scriptures talks about why the word now, I'm going to go back to what I just was talking about concerning rules and regulations that you have to abide by. I want to tweak that. Every guideline and every instruction in the Bible is designed to profit us. Every instruction, I'm going to say instead of rules, 
guidelines. Every instruction guideline, it's like the lines on the road on the highway. They are there to keep you safe and everybody else around you safe. Are you with me? Was that a bad thing that the government did for you and I? Or was that a good thing? Is it a bad thing for a state policeman to pull over someone that's going down the highway like this, weaving in between the lines, not paying attention to the guidelines? Is that a bad thing? Come on, it's not a trick question. It's not a bad thing. Did I hit a, something there about state troopers? Father, deliver them. They are government agents that create order and blessing. <laughs> Deliver Bill right now. <clears throat> they, those lines and those people that enforce those lines are good things, okay? So take me as a state policeman. I'm a good thing. Oh, wait, that was a really, really <laughs> poor response. Lord, what is going on this morning? When I say something that identifies the lines and encourages you to stay between the lines, I am loving you. I am loving you. I am loving you. I am focused more on you being blessed than whether you hate me or are, are angry at me. That's an action of love. Are you with me? Okay. So Jesus himself says this in... Luke 6, 46 through 49, he says, why am I a little hot? I'm good? Okay, I'll be hot then. Uh, <laughs> verse 46, this is Jesus. Say, this is Jesus. Okay. He's the captain of the state policeman. All right. He is, now no, here, the love message is great. The grace message is great. The mercy message is great. All that is great. But it's all designed to draw you in between the lines so that you live a profitable, protected life. Are you with me? Yes. It's not just to say, well, God loves me and I can go live the way I want or God will have mercy on me, heal for me, I can live the way I want. No, that's poppy schnapp. That's, that's, that, that's, like, that's like Judah saying to mommy, I love you, mommy, I love you, mommy, I love you, mommy, or any other of your parents, I love you, mommy, I love you, daddy, and then they don't listen to you. No, love listens. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Jesus says to them. And do not do what I say. As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice... I will show you what they are like. Now, Jesus is just about to explain the incentive plan, the profitability of loving him by listening to him and following him. There's an advantage. There's an advantage of listening and following him. Hear my heart. There's an advantage. Frank Sinatra was wrong. Frank Sinatra was wrong. That was as nicely as he sang. It was a demon song. It did not come from heaven. His voice may have come from heaven. Whether he knew Jesus or not, I don't know. I hope that he did. But that song didn't come from heaven. The My Way song was a demon song. That will lead you down the wrong road. Your way is a low way. God says, my way is the highway. And it's a highway that when you get on it, it's like flying above the clouds. I'll, I'll say in modern day terms, it's the jet stream. And I'll tell you, every single airline pilot is pointing their jet, the nose of their jet through those clouds into the jet stream. Why in the jet stream? Come on. There's clarity. There's less resistance. This is the way we want to travel, where the sun shines. Okay? So the whole heart of God is to, is to 
train us like an airline pilot to get our life, the Boeing 747, into the jet stream. That's the whole heart of God. He's not a, a, a dictator. He's not a taskmaster. He's a father that knows more than us. He's the wisest professor, the Holy Spirit, the mentor, the life coach that knows more than us. And he knows what works. Because it doesn't matter if it, you're in today's culture or 2,000 years. There's principles that work then and there's principles that work now. They're life-giving forever producing principles of his goodness. So he goes on to say, say, concerning hearing his word, following his word, I'm always going to include, ask the Holy Spirit to help you do the word. Don't just put it in your backpack on your to-do list. Say, Lord, I can't do that. I need some help, like our brother said today. It goes on to say, if you do this, if you listen and follow, you are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When a flood came and the torrent struck that house, but, could, but it could, could not shake, it wouldn't shake the house because it was well built. Say well built. The whole heart of God is to help us have a life that is well built on a solid rock. Because <laughs> the storms are going to come. Don't come out of avoidance, come out of denial, get into reality, connect with the greater reality, and build your life according to who he is on the chief cornerstone, according to his word, and you will overcome every situation. I guarantee you. Because he's made it that way. But the one, say but the one, who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. I love the heart of God. I'm going to say it's like a coin, heads and tails. When we have not done this, when we have not heeded to this because of lack of knowledge or we rejected knowledge that we heard and we did the Frank Sinatra my way thing, there is mercy, there is forgiveness. The kindness of God is new every single morning. So we can say, Father, I didn't listen. And now I'm, I'm, I'm in a mess. Please forgive me. And you will receive the heart and help and wisdom of God. He'll reach out to you, and he will help you. Now, there is a section that's a little bit more sobering in Proverbs where it says, you didn't want to listen to me. You just basically laughed at me. You mocked me. You didn't pay attention to me. So now you're in trouble. And so I'm on pause right now. It actually says this. You didn't want to listen to my wisdom, so fine. You're, you're it. You're on your own. I say that because there can be an imbalance in the mercy, forgiveness, grace message where we sometimes are not operating in the sobriety that was identified and brought the breakthrough in praise and worship. He is Yahweh. He is God. He is king of kings. He is lord of lords. He is the beginning of the end. And there needs to be a saturation in our heart of not only who he is, but who we are. Because when we remember, if we're talking about this subject of love and relationships in a better way, the best way to do life natural relationship is to have a great relationship with him and the way to have a great relationship with him is remember his nature his promises and who you were privileged to be now his son but not only that you're a student you're a servant 
You're a soldier. You're an ambassador. You're a branch of the living vine. You're part of the bride of Christ. You're part of the body of Christ. You're a citizen, and you're a temple of the Holy Ghost. The more we walk in a revelation of what I just said and how privileged we are and where we're going to end up, as Billy said, at the end of this thing, the more we will feel the love of God because when you meditate on what you've been given, you value what you've been giving, given, the feelings of love will always be there. Feelings of love leave when you stop valuing. All love springs from the fountain of value. I'm going to say it again. All love, any love that I have springs out of value that I have for my sister. Now, real quick, oh Jesus, I got only two hours left. Um, <laughs> real, real quick, um, I found something out. When we did life chat, we talked about three kinds of love, but there's actually four kinds of love, and very quickly, I want to share this and then seal this thing up. There is, because we're headed right into Valentine's Day, I want to make some things really clear and, and bless you. Ready? Give me a couple minutes. Yes, thank you. Amen. Okay. There is phileo love. That's brotherly love. City of Philadelphia, brotherly love. My wife said it on life chat. There's um, a love that I didn't know about in the Bible. I just found out about it. It's called store, store love, and it's, it's about family love between uh, fathers and daughters and fathers and sons, family love, okay? Can you say store? There is uh, eros love, which is the romantic love between a husband and a wife, and I'm going to go right, uh, right back to that. There's agape love, which is unconditional love. I am not going to give up on you. I am here for you. I don't care how you behave. I don't care how you treat me. I will love you. I will love the foolishness out of you. Amen. Amen. Love never fails. Come on, this is so key. Help me, Jesus, bring this to an end. That's why what I said in praise and worship was so critical. Because if I'm focused on your behavior, love will wither. Because you know what? I can always find something wrong with you. There's always something that you're going to do that irritates me. Everywhere you look, come on. Say focus. focus. Focus on identity. Get off of the behavior train. Get off of the behavior train. Okay, help me, Jesus, bring this to a close. Okay, Valentine's Day is about romantic love, okay? By the way, there's, ah, there's a big message, but I'm going to say this to sow this into your hearts. The reason that God said that romantic love, or if I'm going to say sexual love, is for a marriage relationship is because there's a bonding that happened and God created a bonding and an emotional connection. So if you go and have sex with people outside of marriage, you're creating all these connections that you were never supposed to make and you're taking something from someone that you don't deserve. And it's all your sister's fault because as soon as I wasn't going to say this today, but this is a real hot button for me. Women are a gold medal, men. You don't get their body until you pay the price like an Olympian. Are you hearing me? And women, you don't give your body until they pay a price. An Olympian do you know what Olympian goes through? The practice, the 4 o'clock mornings, and just to get to, into the Olympic team. Then they got to go through all kinds of races, and they might get the moment. They, they got to go through it. In this culture, we're handing out women like candy, and candy are ha and women are handing out candy like they were candy. You're not candy. You're the best thing that God ever made. I'm going to say this again. God created everything, looked around, and said, something's missing. 
Women are the encore of God. So when my sister said there's a bunch of sexual assault salt on UMass, it just lit my fire. I just wanted to smack some sense into somebody. But I know why it exists. Because they just haven't been taught right. They haven't taught their value. The men haven't been, uh, have not been loved properly. They're looking for love in the wrong places. The women are looking for love in the wrong places. It doesn't come through eros love. It comes through agape love. Unconditional love. Where I lie my life, lay my life down for someone. Eros love is actually number four in a marriage. It's agape, it's store, it's phileo. Well, I'm getting hungry thinking about phileo. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say the kingdom of God is the upside down kingdom, the backwards kingdom. No, it's the right side up kingdom. The culture is upside down. This works. This works. The guidelines work. His wisdom works. It's the better way. It's the only way when it comes to love and relationships. Never, about, never mind about any other issue in our life. It's the better way. You and I know the better way. Let's really burn with a passion to ask God, help us do love and relationship the better way. Help us focus on the people's true identity instead of the behavior so my love for people doesn't wither, but it actually grows. And I become like my Father, and I become like Jesus, and I become like the Holy Spirit, and the only thing that's coming out of me is life, love, kindness, and patience. Come on! Let's go after this thing. Come on, let's go after this thing. Let's make it a core value in your life. Let's wake up in the morning and say, God, help me to love like I've never loved today. I'll make up my text message this morning. <laughs> God is so wise. Oh, my God. I'm getting so hot. I got to end. If you want the feelings of love to be alive inside of you, be thankful every moment of every day. <laughs> In relationship... In relationship, find everything you can be thankful about. Wake up in the morning and just say, God, God wants to help. I love God. He not only tells you what to do that's going to produce life, but he's willing to help you. I mean, come on. Is there a better leader than that? Not only shows you the way, knows the way, proven he knows the way. He's the wisest, but he's got the power and the strength that he'll help you go the right way. Come on, you know how much. We've got the better way, man. We, we're privileged people. Yes, we, are. we should be singing. Never, ever should we be singing the blues. Now, there's mercy for when you are singing the blues, but man, most of the time, we're, our shofar should be coming out of our heart like Kathy. dun da da Da, 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 da. You know who my God is? Do you know who I am? Do you know the angels that are with me right now? Do you know that I have an advantage today? Ow! Come on, make my day! Bring it on! I gotta quit. Somebody else talk. <sighs> Amen. Now, that message should go across the airwaves, especially the part about women.
I think a lot of women would get free by that little, just that little excerpt that he said. And not only that, I think men would have the conviction of the living God upon them. Amen? You know, ultimately, if they do that, they're going to be and feel the love of God themselves. So it's not a bad thing. Amen? But that, where's the cue? <laughs> that was just that little excerpt, just that little excerpt about being the metal. That was awe-inspiring for women to hear. Amen. So I love the Holy Spirit, and he is so cool. And you want to, what you want to do, the reason why you come to church is you want, there's a momentum, okay? God downloads to the past, to the praise and worship team, to the pastors. We get scriptures. That what you're supposed to do from here is you're supposed to take and ride the wave of the momentum that God specifically, the word specifically for you in this congregation for this day, okay? So the word, I'm going to give you the word because we love the word, that the whole service was on was on Matthew 14, chapter 14, verse 22, all the way to um, 36, Jesus walking on the water. Peace be still. So your assignment is to what I would do in your prayer time because now you're on the wave. You're on the wave is to read uh, Matthew 14, 22 through 36. So, and the part of the song I love the most, I'm going to be dancing on the water. Amen. So, immediately he directed disciples to go into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he sent the crowds away. Now, it's very interesting to know that at this point in time, Jesus was very grieving. He had just found out his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. He gets to the other side. He gets the news. He gets the other side. There's a crowd waiting for him. So he puts down his emotions. He does what the Lord tells him and ministers to the crowd. But now he's going to send the crowd away. But now he's still got that emotion, and he's going to bring it to God. This all ties in. Amen. And he, and he had... And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat, by this time, was already a long distance from the land, tossed and battered by the waves. We sang that in the song, right? By the waves, for the wind was against him. Now, I want to bring this in. This goes into every area of your life. You can be tossed by the waves in your finances. You could be tossed by your waves in your mind. You could be tossed by the waves in anything, right? For the wind was against him, or life was against him. And in the fourth watch of the night, the darkest of the night, right before the dawn, between 3 and 6 a.m., thank you, Amplified, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. Have you ever looked at your finances and said, oh, my God, it's a ghost? <laughs> right? It's a mess. Oh, my God, I have to get this under control. Right? Amen. Amen. 